All right, hey, hi, hello, what is up, internet? Oh, hi. I have with me, hello, I'm John Hammond, and with me is the one and only Mr. Caleb Stewart. Hello. So what I have for your faces is some footage of Cyber Force, which, uh, yeah, was a, was a game that we played months ago in New York. I drove five hours north to party in New York. Um, so we have eight hours of footage of Ooh. when we played this and we're gonna watch gonna, the whole thing yeah at normal speed yeah no, no popcorn stops. no popcorn <laughs> um <laughs> i'm actually speeding this up to i don't know if you saw that good old 500 okay 281 times percent there's no way that's gonna actually happen my computer's not cool enough to do that <laughs> um but i don't think i'm sure look at that look at that parrot yeah, yeah the terminal parrot that is some foreshadowing right there <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah <laughs> Um, we're going to be just showcasing this at breakneck speed to hopefully showcase some of the cool stuff in there. Um, the event was two days. So, okay, sorry. So what was, you don't yeah. need to talk about what the yeah, event yeah. actually was. We are, uh, we're red teamers in this case. This is a blue team versus red team game for some undergrad schools and universities, um, testing their cyber ninja warrior skills, uh, and their leapness and their cool stuff. So I'm, I'm probably going to have to like skip through some things here. We got to be the red team for West Point. Which yes. Fun. So we're Coast Guard kidlets, and we were like, yo, West Point's here? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we, I, I remember I told the organizers, like, I want that team. Uh, well, and that was team I, four? I, I, something like that. I remember you. we asked them, we were like, hey, can we request a specific team? And yeah. they were like, um, I, no one's, at, I guess. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. Like, I guess that's okay. And I was like, I want that one. <laughs> um. So I don't think I'm sharing too many trade secrets here. Uh, they or any at all, really. It's a it's a red team exercise, so it's kind of sp subjective in how that there's grading, right, or how they actually score. So um, there are stage attacks and like things that you want to try and actually accomplish throughout the day. And I want to move quickly through this, but this was actually prep time. I don't know if you can see the clock up in the in the top right there, but this was actually just trying to see what we can see, see what we can access. Um, and then try and get a little bit of inventory for tools that we want to run or memes that we want to have. Uh, and that actually is a good portion of that. I hope I pull it up really quick because I start to uh, start to Google what are some quality memes that we can throw in here. <laughs> and uh, that's one thing, um, if anyone is not super familiar, the red team is going to have access way beforehand. We weren't allowed to actually physically affect anything at the beginning, but we had access before the games even started or before the blue team was even there to actually, like, Met, not mess around with things, but just to see everything and, and have an idea of how it all worked, and, and that way we could kind of hit the ground running as soon as it started, if you will. This is when I just had, I just bought my Dell XPS 15, so I still need to like pull some tools in. You can see me installing Metasploit, I think. You can see me some grabbing some Empire or uh, Python 2, etc., mm -hmm. Python 3 stuff, and there it is. Memes. <laughs> there it is. Let's sort of pull up the inventory. Red team memes. Yeah, yeah. These are hilarious. <laughs> Especially seeing them at the breakneck speed. is a little epileptic. <laughs> I like it. Um, a whole new folder called memes. Yeah, exactly. I need, to, I need to build up an arsenal or like have a repertoire of things I can throw in when the time comes. <laughs> so, the game... The nine o'clock in the time in the morning, we still just in prep and just kind of scanning. Um, the staged attack started, I think, at ten o'clock, something like that. The, I saw the schedule blow by. A yeah, times. yeah. I remember there was some time zone difference because we're playing against different teams across the country. Mm -hmm. um, for our specific spot, it, it <laughs> Terminal Parrot. <laughs> it's your favorite. It is one of my favorites. <laughs> Uh, so this was in two two days. So the first day that it, this is the video right now, um, I, I like a Google Empire and the TV show comes up. Uh, the first day we're actually trying to get our footholds and get our initial access. Um, the second day is when really we can start to kind of be trolls and be really annoying. So yeah, you see me installing mm -hmm. Metasploit here. Again, I'm going to skip along to make sure this isn't too boring. <laughs> But I think showing you guys the fire. Later. Yes, it does get <laughs> once like ten o'clock hits and then eleven o'clock hits. We can start to do some stuff, talk about some of the attacks that were on there. Um, but it is just the fireworks and you running through things at some breakneck speed here. Pip, classic, classic <laughs> pip struggle. With not pip. being able to install something, <laughs> classic. Pip two versus pip three versus virtual environment versus your own versus <laughs> that parent directory isn't owned by your current <laughs> user. <sighs> but I did want to work with Empire. Uh, I told myself that I would, 
And I actually learned it just now, like just recently, that you can use it for Linux stuff. Like you can have that Python launcher. And yeah, so they had originally they had made PowerShell Empire, right. and then someone I don't, I don't know the exact like developers who exactly it was, but someone was like, hey, this is really good. So they had a fork of it. I don't know if you call it a fork, but uh, almost kind of a remake in Python that was called like Pi Empire or something like that. Um, and and then they ended up being merged together to become just Empire. I seem like um, Empire with a Y. I think that's that what that it might was. Have been yeah, it. yeah. yeah. Um, and then at some point, they got merged together, and now it's it's not technically PowerShell Empire anymore. It's just Empire. Um, I like but, this because this is talking about some of the Pam backdoor stuff, and you actually just wrote that. Yeah, so I just wrote <laughs> a little a little Pam backdoor guy. So I wrote a little module for Pam in C um, that basically will allow you to log in as any user with a specified password. Just threw it up on GitHub. If anyone wants to check it out, I guess we can post it. I think that's somewhere. awesome. I think that will be an absolutely very good tool for these red team engagements and fun games. So I'm going to learn a little bit of Empire before the game gets started. I like there are moments you can very clearly see, like, either my lock screen comes up and you know that I just, like, got up to go to the bathroom or something. This <laughs> or is raw bowl footage. of food. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> they, did, they did provide food, which is a lot of fun. They kept coming in and asking if we had enough food. It was really funny. They were really worried about whether the red team had enough snacks. You need to have food for all the nerd hackers. <laughs> so what we ended up doing was actually trying to coordinate inside of a Google Doc um, that will come up soon kind of enough. Messy. Yeah, it, it got very messy, but I don't know any other real organized way to do it. You can see us starting off with some Nmap scans. So we can get started scanning. There are a lot of Raspberry Pis that were filling the network because mm -hmm. I think they wanted to have like this industrial control system theme but without I having didn't really feel it to be honest yeah there, there was some there was a that one portal that we'll see later yeah it was industrial control system theme but the rest of it I really didn't feel it we, yeah. there were a few things we logged into but... that's a common thing I think in some games or exercises that try to have that and just use a raspberry pi to simulate it but it's still a computer man yeah I mean the other day they're all computers just the right the industrial control system stuff just tips over if you poke it too much. That's the, the, the I, love, I googled FTP, and I got some pretty pretty good stuff there. I don't know if you can see it spinning out. <laughs> That's usually what I do. I order an MMAP scan, and I just Google all the service names, you know? Yeah. <laughs> what is FTP? What is NetBIOS? Um... <laughs> Well, so this is 1045, so we should be we should be off of the races Yeah, we now. should be starting. And I think that's when these scans are okay to roll. Oh, it wasn't the first, like, hour, even after the game started, wasn't a scheduled attack to, like, the first hour after or something Right. Like that. I think there was there was that issue with the time zones where, like, oh, we're an hour otherwise. And, well, the first one that they started was, like, a pre-planted, <laughs> it was a pre-planted, like, network, like, bind shell mm -hmm. running on port 999. Oh, we yeah. couldn't get to it. I think our team yeah. caught that good on them yeah. <laughs> for noticing a an odd port oh i love this we created a channel army <laughs> it's <been> my first <laughs> let's put warheads on it's fun stuff it's fun stuff <laughs> there's plenty of morale uh. so they had a website that yeah. we had to break into um and they were very clever the team that we were working against was very kind of smart in their protection of this because they I can't. I can't. I guess I can't sing their praises too much because the basic author was good, but not a silver bullet by any means. Well, so what the basic author was good. They didn't tie down a different entry point because right. we we had access from a different way and we could bypass their HTTP base, basic auth because of a different vulnerability. It wasn't I forget what exactly it was. Yeah, now, you'll honest. see it come very very soon. Um, the first thing that I started to do in running through stuff was get the Raspberry Pi because they all had their default password of Raspberry mm -hmm. like Raspberry, uh, and then I immediately add a fake user add it in sudoers and just keep doing this process over and over and over again. You'll see me do that way too often. But as with every exercise and red team thing that you see, people will just say, Oh yeah, default credentials. And that's, and, and it really is. I mean, in all honesty, in like a real world scenario, I, I think that's pre either default credentials or weak credentials are pretty realistic for like, yeah. if you were talking about a realistic scenario, um, I like to try and add usernames that look somewhat similar to others. So you can see I had a P1, so it looks like an I. Um, there was a default blue team account on all these machines. So I added a blue team with a 1 instead of an L. Uh, and then I would add just add that to the sudoers group, make it so they can run without any password, etc. Um, I'm a big fan of logging in. And we'll and I don't know if you'll see it on because yes. I did it all a lot. It's about though. to happen. Um, yeah, so... 
we we would I, I would always log in and I like to go in and take um, whether the LP the games user. I'm pulling you in the oh, shot. Am I? Am I not? <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Uh, I told you we were gonna be close. <laughs> either the either LP the games user uh, one of the, some of those default users www dub 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 data is what you always say quadruple f- um, dubs. So one of those are all those users, and I like to take those and uh, either add SSH keys or add passwords. Adding passwords is a little more noticeable if someone's checking like Etsy Shadow. But if you can add SSH keys into their home directories, like games is uh, slash user games, I think is the uh, home directory for it. You can add an SSH key there, and then I'll actually go through and I'll replace um, user sbin no logon and slash bin slash false. Both those binaries, remove them and replace them with bin bash, which you see happening there. Yeah, what I um, started to do was symlink bin bash. So the, false. so the symlink you didn't like that. So the symlink works, but yeah. if they have any kind of script that's going through and looking for oddities, it'll Good. notice. A sim link, whereas good. if you actually remove, yeah, that's a good thing. Good. Where if you remove bin false and remove uh, user bin no uh, no logon no login, um, and then replace them with bin bash, the only way they'll notice that's the wrong one because it's still a binary. The only way they'll notice it's the wrong one is if they were to actually either run it or actually run some kind of diff on either like the the hash of the original file on the new one, which you can actually do, I think, with dpackage. Yeah, I was going to say, for, yeah, something that we tried to do for the pros versus Joe's yeah. game was use like dpackage some. And, like, your package managers know how to do that. Like, yeah. they, they can figure out and see how but to do that. But if you don't do that, then it looks completely normal. So what I would do is I would add an SSK, SSH key for those uh, default users, like LP and games and mail, things like that, and then replace user sbin no login with bin bash. And then if you looked at Etsy password, it would look completely normal, and you'd be like, oh, cool, my accounts are locked down, but I can still log in as those users. Um, and then some other things you can do, you can add different users to, uh, sudoers, um, which is a little more noticeable. Um, but, uh, that did, at least gets you user access to the machine. I tried a ch mod 6,000 up there. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> that was one of my favorite things. There are a lot of hilarious, stupid things that happen in this. Uh, and I'm very well, excited you type for it some like 300 miles an hour. Yeah. My 70% of the keys that I hit on the keyboard are the backspace key. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys know. You, you YouTube fellows wouldn't see that firsthand. Oh, I know, too. I sit next to you. That's true. It constantly. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely right. Crank, crank, crank. Uh, so, I this started, was the next schedule. Eternal correct? Blue, yes. Yeah. I started running it with the Eternal Blue underscore Windows 8, which I realized was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and then just went for regular win it, uh, Eternal Blue. There's the PS yeah, Exec so, one. I was like, never forget about the PS Exec. Because they're different. The regular Eternal Blue one is the one that has the possibility of crashing the machine, but you don't need a named pipe. Whereas PS Exec, you need a, it's PS Exec, you need a named pipe that you can access, but you have no chance. I think close to zero percent chance of crashing the machine. Yeah. Um, so there, there's differences, but I would say if you if you know there's a named pipe there that you can grab, then PS Exec, I would say is, PS Exec is probably the better one, but. Um, one thing that I see myself starting to do is looking up shells with a Z, which I heard about at Pros vs. Joe's, and I don't know if I properly understood like what it really was or what I wanted it to be, because I mentioned this to you earlier just in like passing or casual conversation that intellectual, sophisticated people have, is that I want to have something that will like know I need a, I need a range of ports listening for incoming reverse shells and mm-hmm. i want to be able i want it to like smartly handle it is m player crapping out no it's just me apparently going to the bathroom again <laughs> um it happens often yeah i drink a lot of monster it's true it's a, a pro- yeah. is it a problem no yeah, it's fine maybe m player is crapping out i can't tell nope we're going oh we're moving okay um adding some stuff to it said host file i think probably just sync holding Maybe? Oh, no. I was testing again with shells. So, shells, uh, I wanted to be able to, like, know and recognize when I'm making uh, reverse shell, like, connections, but it wouldn't do that in the way that I wanted. I think I need to get better or just understand more of Empire or Merlin or even Cobalt Strike if if I fork out my arm and legs. That (laughs) would be an option because I want something to, like, okay, here's a callback that happens. Let's catch it. Keep it for me in the background. Um, I... Maybe I misunderstood shells, but I never got it to do what I what I wanted it to do. I have never actually touched that yeah. at all. I remember yeah. you talking about it, and I've still never gone back and looked yeah. at it. I saw this JSON configuration files, and it looks like they're like explicitly JSON. talking about here's how it's going to be working. But like, I don't want to have to care about that. I just want some command that calls back to me and then knows what it's doing. So I I think I just put well, this on I, the I think table to be able to have something like that, that you're going to need a more intelligent payload to yeah. go there. Like, right. 
right now your your payloads consist of just a callback, so that they're not intelligent enough to really know what's going on. You're gonna have to kind of uh, move up in the world to a better, more sophisticated payload. That's true. I need to be, <laughs> and I try it for a little bit with some Raspberry Pi stuff, but <laughs> crops out. Good old uh, lock screen. Lock screen. This is me actually going to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Always lock your screen at CTFs. Yeah, that's a good never, call. Never walk away. Might bring some burner laptops, especially, or like a laptop I don't actually use as my personal laptop if we go to like DEF CON. Oh, or yeah. Ne- something oh, cool. No, yeah. Never going there with... <laughs> no. Um, you can see, and you've probably seen in a lot of other footage, where my terminal or my Terminator screen just has a thousands of different oh sub terminals in there. I, it gives me anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> I have there's a picture of me on one event where I had or I wasn't using terminal terminator and I had like 47 little different gnome terminals oh my separate God. windows so I hit alt tab at one point and focus on it and it was like had my screen explode with them it was hilarious <laughs> yeah oh god so I know there was some weird thing we were trying to do okay this is when we're still trying to get around that basic off yeah. but when another um stage exploit comes through where we're able to use some other uh, passwords that have, have been pre-planted in like vulnerability prior access stuff um, we're able to get us into some accounts like you had mentioned LP games mail and some of the others that had passwords that you wouldn't have expected like you don't normally consider LP games nobody in mail user accounts but they had passwords that were staged so I think as a takeaway as a blue team player has changed the passwords for literally everything and disable the accounts that you need to be disabled. Right. Like, even if you don't think or consider it to be an interactive user, anything that's a user can be an interactive user. Mm-hmm. So. And the depackage sums is yeah. really good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have that in a pros versus Joe's repository because we patched it into the Lin Enum script. Because I, I like to use red team tools in a purple team sense, where I'm going to use them as a blue team member to find out where my security holes are. Um, so we put it inside of a Lin Enum, the reboot user Lin Enum script that you might see often like hack the box attempts or stuff like that. Um, so this was a lot of Googling initially, but we found an FTP that we could log oh, into yeah. with the default creds. Um, and I, I think we were able to put some web shell, I maybe? I forget if we used the FTP for that yeah. or not. But I think that pointed us to that, oh, there are still default credentials that are, are being used here. So we were able to do some stuff with that. Um, and at that point, we had access, anonymous FTP access, file download was successful. And then we're allowed to use some of the weak login attacks. Yeah, so data was an account interactive and it didn't have a password. So we could sudo add our own new accounts. And then you had figured out, well, we can find the HT password file that's controlling that basic HTTP auth, mm-hmm. and then we have access to the yep. HTTP that we, we didn't we have We added before. another account. So they had their own account, and they were yep. using that to get in and out, and I just added another account to their HT password file, so unless they ever... They never opened the HT password file, so they never noticed that we were even able to get into it. You um, set your no log in there. Yep. You added that. You can see you're typing in Google Docs for a second, which I think is cool. <laughs> Yeah, kill yes, I, I was there on another computer. Jay Gublat. Oh, yeah, there it is. Jay, so that's where we added yeah. HK access. <laughs> One of the other really cool and fun things was they had a VNC connection <laughs> oh, that was visible in, in originally blocked behind Basic Auth, but it was running on a different port. So we were still able to access it and find it. Um, and I started to do something interesting because you could just squat and like watch them. You can terminal squat and just see what they're doing. Because I think that was their only access to the machine. At least as, as that HMI for their industrial control system Raspberry Pi thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we started to explore, is there anything we could see in there? Is there anything we could poke around? Uh, any files we could access? And you might have been you were the one that found that VNC light file or something that would actually still display um, the, H, the, the, v, the VNC connection. Yeah, so so they like you said, it was being served as a different port. So whenever you saw it through behind the page that was actually basic auth, um, it was just an iframe for a different mach- for a different port. Uh, so that page was behind HD access, but you could just go to that directly to that port and you'd still see the page. So they did a good job blocking access to the main website. They just didn't realize, hey, our service is being served on a different port. There it has is. no difference. There yeah, is, so we yeah. were still able to get to it. So, or I guess it wasn't a different port. Oh yeah, it was a different port. Yeah. 
this is a funny thing. Um, <laughs> and I hope we come to it soon because I was like, man, this is, this is the only vector we have is just watching them. Well, in, we, in well this. we sat there for a while. Oh yeah. Because, because this is not only a view. We, we could interact with it. We could, we right. could click in it. We could change things. We could type. The problem was that was our, that was probably was they were on it as well. So the minute they saw us change something, they would know we were there. <laughs> Um, so we stared at it for a long while. Yeah, I kind of waited. I, I, I lurked in the background as a ninja <laughs> to uh, watch and see, it. are they not using this right now? Are they not going to have eyes on it? If I try and so quickly, add you tried to quickly add a user, <laughs> and, um, they, and they started clicking on yeah, it. Yeah, I quickly add the user to the Sudoverse file, um, and then I think someone closes the terminal that I'm in real quick, so I'm like, oh, someone spotted me. And I try to create like a little reverse shell connection, and I feel them holding down the backspace key. <laughs> you can see me like literally fighting someone on the other end of this VNC connection. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I knew it was gonna be in there. Uh, I was like, I'll just leave then. I think yeah. I, I so see. so it was funny. You we were able to add a user, and we were able to um, add it to the pseudoers group. However, um, we weren't able to. They they had only SSH uh, uh, private keys. Private keys. That's enabled. what it was. So they enabled private key authentication. So we couldn't log in with a password. So we had a user with a password that was added to the pseudo group, but we couldn't log in because we didn't have a key. Um, so that was kind of our, our issue. We we're like, well, shit. Now they know we're here, and we can't add a key to this user. Um, so we'll come point. back to that a little later. But that was kind of a fun little back and forth with us on their machine for a little bit. Yeah. And we did get the user in, um, and I think soon enough I start to like try and stage some uh oh yeah i well, use yeah, x so, automation that's well, what it so was. yeah we we can use you can use um i forget what the command was because i remember I, I was like over your shoulder with it you um, couldn't paste into the vnc connection X, yeah xte so we used xte to paste in this like as as if it automated typing in the the string and then hitting the enter key because i couldn't paste into that vnc connection yep. so hilarious and dumb and stupid but literally me figuring out okay this is how i press the enter key with this program <laughs> and staging the little uh little reverse shell syntax so then in the end of this what's basically going to happen is we're going to have xte simulate on our the host end on the attacker's machine simulate typing out an entire command to add a private key to this That's user so and then pressing enter we're going to sleep before it starts that and then we're going to like say sleep for five seconds and then go over to that VNC connection, click on the terminal, and then XDE is just going to go <laughs> and type it all for us <laughs> in like half a second before they can even close the terminal. Oh, it's so funny. Um, and I don't think they even knew it happened. I, I think it kind of just happened, and they had no idea, and then we were in their machine. Yeah, yeah. Vice is Sudo this after again? it happened? Yeah, I think, it might. Might I think been, it happened really quickly I think already. you might have been the one that actually finished the script. Oh, was I? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so there might not be real footage of it, but we got into the HMI, and now we're just, okay, quick, add our users, put up some persistence. Um, and this is like poor man's solutions to persistence by adding some hiding users. Um, what I've been trying to do recently is add a cheesy reverse shell command as part of a cron job, or putting it in bash RC, just trying to hide it in an automated place that um, will run. Like, we'll, we'll consistently, without user interaction, and we'll add a time schedule, actually execute. Well, something you, you tried to do, which I think is going to happen soon, um, that I yes. think was actually a good idea. This is, um, this is it's, it's getting close to it, and it's actually hilarious. I, I think it was a really good idea. It just <laughs> didn't work you can out. See it, you can see it starting to happen. Um, um, so what you were trying, I don't know if you want to explain it. I'll, go, I'll try and explain okay, it. Okay, you, you go for it. Yeah, Because <laughs> I am too, I'm, start, I'm starting to put it together up in the top left there. Uh, I have this notion that like they're going to run some commands pretty consistently. You know what? Like the ls command. So here's an idea. How about every time they run the ls command, let's have it start in your reverse shell and call back to me. Uh, so I try and create some users and make enough persistence that I know I've got places to log into. Um, but you'll see me start to create a new uh, bin ls script. Uh, a script that will eventually be a wrapper for what I would want to be an ls command. So I do this for a bit, and then I say, well, I want to see if I can get it timed right. Create all these, create all these accounts, get a key in there, because I know this is happening very, very soon. <laughs> I'm getting this thing in here, and then I say, sudo nano bin ls, and I create a reverse shell command, and I call ls inside of the script like an idiot. I made ls1 and backup ls, so then I start to make a connection, and I've got my listener going, 
and I've got LS calling back to it and calling back to it. But then I see, cannot allocate memory. <laughs> Job control turned off. <laughs> cannot fork process. And I realize <laughs> that I just recursively called the LS command and repeatedly made shells call back to me. So I unintentionally fork bombed this box. And th this snowballs oh, way yeah. farther than you'd expect. Oh, oh yeah. Um... <laughs> so so the funny the funniest part to me is is the fact that I the did reboot didn't it stop it. Oh yeah. Yeah, you're like, right. That's the crazy. So so you would think that this is this is a problem but you'd reboot it and the machine would act normally <laughs> until <laughs> pseudo bin RMLS uh, until you reboot the machine and then it would act normally until you ran bin as LS again. You would think. You'd think that would be what would happen. Yeah. Interestingly though, um even we, after a reboot, it, it did not The come footage back. is here where I try to send messages like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I did not mean to DOS your machine. That was actually an accidental DOS. <laughs> yeah, that that's probably the funniest thing that happened while you're we here. Yeah. O on the same along the same line, some of the things we did just as kind of a, a red team, um, kind of taunting the blue yeah, team. You'll see it. You'll um see it. some things that we did along the same lines, uh, were things like bin L or bin uh, such cat. Let, yeah, and I, I don't want to talk about it when it comes to it because it's 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 very funny to watch. Um, but my the most painful thing when I did that was knowing that I made the backup binary like I actually had the script that would normally do what I intended and then didn't even think to use it. Uh, here we're trying to do some web shells, I think. We tried to move into... So we uh, tried to get FTP write access. Yeah, today. that's what it was. I think it looked like FTP was working, but we didn't know what directory it was writing into mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. So this is the one of the cool things because we had about the halftime game. This is gonna, I think, getting close to the end of the day, where or halfway, or we're, we're submitting the vulnerabilities and things that we found. But we do take notes and we do submit something that has. I wanted to say a little bit more formal or intuitive. This is an explanation of what we did and why we were able to do it. Because you guys did a good job. You're doing smart and clever things, but we still were able to kind of move around it. Yeah, and I think it's a it's a consistent thing whether it be ctfs or a blue team exercises or whatever it's always like oh these really these really cool things these really obscure vulnerabilities we're going to fix all these and then you forget the little things you forget that oh i'm just going to go and check these things manually instead of oh i ran my script and it looked fine like don't forget to just use your eyes and do it manually because it's yeah. a big deal i want to get into day two uh, i know it's coming php info yeah okay cool so we're about almost done for this day uploads Trying to send some stuff in there. Was that two <laughs> Our, days? It was two days. Was it? Yeah. I don't even remember it being We got two a hotel. It's good stuff. It's all just one big blur of one... It's one one big thing. Yeah. Mind. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> Bolt Corp. So many private keys. Yeah, we had the idea, or you had the idea, like, let's all use one kind of consistent private key as a as a red team or as the individuals yeah. that are that are that are doing the uh, pen test which is smart yeah i think i think it makes it easier that way like no whether you created the account or i created the account it doesn't matter like oh we all have the same private key on slack let's pull it down and then mm -hmm. we can we can just go with that right so i do this stupid thing for the longest amount of time where i try to put a meme on their website <laughs> i don't know if you remember you worked on that for a long I worked time for way too long at trying to put a single image on their website and it wouldn't work no you it's just HTML. It, it was. It was just HTML, and I'm like, w WTF? Is this some Django template thing that's, like, ruining my life right now? Because image source should straight up do it. <laughs> <laughs> and you tried to encode it in Base64. Base64? <laughs> like, it's I, still printing. Yeah, I think I, I catted it, and, like, I can't get this to stop. P-Kill Base64. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I remember, like, you tackled this. Like, you took it from me. It's like, why I, is this I taking think, you I still so couldn't long? get it to do it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I felt dumb afterwards. I was like, John, you're an idiot. Just put the image in the website. Right? And, and then I was like, after, like, 20 work. minutes of me trying to do it, I was like, fuck it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I think it was Django's templating. Like, it needed to know if this is the location of the static files for Django. Yeah. But it just wasn't taking it. It was not having it. It was probably something stupid simple, too. We ended up doing... <laughs> We tried to serve it from our machine, I think, is yeah. what we tried to do. What is not simply... I think I had the file extension wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like something, something absolutely absurd. <laughs> la, 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 la. 
so close to the end of this day. And then the next day, the next day is all about trolling. The next day is all about having fun. Yeah. So there is going to be some good stuff. I thought I was trying the Apache get root mod. There's a plugin. There's some extension you can add to Apache, like Apache mod root or something, where you just netcat to it. You type in get root and it finds it. Do you remember finding the squirrel mail? I, did we never, yeah, it just kind of popped up and it was not part of the challenge. <laughs> yeah. Like they, they, like, so they had a list of services they had to keep up. They, it was, um, there was the HMI things. There was that website that had the, uh, the notes application. There's a, there's a few other things, but about halfway through the competition, this squirrel mail server just kind of popped up. Sorry on for the, address. sorry for the spastic distraction. <laughs> and we, we have no idea why it was there and no one could tell us why it was existed. Did we get access to it? I don't remember. No. I think we tried like, a lot of exploits and didn't bother. To. <laughs> you see me here going through just like manually changing some of the website names to get a little defacement there. Red Team Corp, though. That's stupid <laughs> and fun. Completely all. You should have changed the Red Team Carp. <laughs> oh, this is hilarious, I think. I added the background, background red, and it clobbers the whole site, and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> He was like, eh, fuck that. Yeah, <laughs> like, okay, you know what, CSS, you're just not going to play nice with I mean, me to today. be fair, CSS never plays nice. No. So, we get into uh, attack number 10, because the in two days we had 20 attacks all in all, so it was cut in half. Uh, we weren't able to do any of those things, or at least kind of notion of the others looking forward. Um, I think because of the SSH private keys. Yeah. yeah. So, th so some of that depended on SSH, and we, like, which was great. Like, they enabled yeah. SSH private key authentication across the board, which was fantastic. Not for us, but for them, it was great. So, another blue team tip. Do that. Yeah, because, I mean, at that point, there's nothing. Like, there's no chance of, like, bad passwords. Like, I can't do anything remotely. at that. No. Not much, anyway, unless you have a vulnerable version of SSH. But I just changed, like, my terminal background. I was doing funky stuff. <laughs> oh. Actually, oh, the FTP default login. And then we knew that there were default passwords, so we... Oh, so that was the thing with FTP. Yeah. Um, they, they enabled uh, SSH uh, private key authentication in for their users, yeah. but then... And we, we had just been looking at FTP as the anonymous user and looking at it, but then we realized FTP by default, I think it's VSFTP and uh, D and uh, Ubuntu, yeah. will authenticate with local users. And we were like, oh shit, we can just log in with FTP as the blue team user with the default password. And it works. So they, they enabled uh, SSH private key authentication, but didn't change the default password for the user, um, which blocked us out with the exception of FTP, which we could log into without the certificate. Um, and then we could write files to, for example, um, the web root, and then we got a shell. I think is how we did That's, it. Yeah. Also, you got the one does not it, simply. It didn't have, <laughs> true, it <laughs> didn't have nano or VI or Vim. It had the text editor Joe. <laughs> I don't know if I you don't saw me that Googling at all. it. No, I think I just de dealt with it, but I don't know if you... People that were watching might have seen me wrestling with that editor. Like, how do I leave? What am I doing? Why wouldn't you make it? I didn't even know you did that. I don't no. even remember that. I probably whined about it at some point during the exercise. Like, what the heck is this editor, Joe? So. Okay, so this is the this is the final report on the end of that day. Um, zero, one out of ten tax were what we were on the first day 11 out of 20 because we hadn't gotten to those attacks yet we just didn't put them in um but we were saying like you guys did good like you guys did well and it was very cool to see some of that stuff um and i put that down here in the notes you see me bang that out basic http was good ssc private key was good um but it's not it's not all the walls are boarded up mm -hmm. so and Is that just yeah. about the end of day one? I think so. Cool. If you're still sticking with us, we can move into day two. That'd be fun. Good Get all the fun stuff. Good times. Okay. Yeah, this is it. One does not simply, <laughs> finally. It's like the whole website. He finally man. got the, the image on the screen. <laughs> 24 hours later. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it took me all night. And they fixed my red team corp. So, trying to see what we still have left for persistence. Um, some of the accounts that we created have not gone away, which 
maybe was a bummer. Uh, and I think we see that uh, especially throughout today because we get to do a little bit more on the offensive burn them if you've got them mentality because we already had so many users and kind of footholds and claws still in there. Why hadn't they been taken out? Like why we are obviously active on the machine. Why aren't they booting us? Why aren't they killing our SSH connections? And that was the strangest thing mm-hmm. I think for us. Um, yeah, and so as we get through this, you'll see we are loud. <laughs> yeah, we were really loud and we were... <laughs> Like, they knew we were there because they would, like, they would kill our connection. Mm-hmm. But then you just log in as another user and you'd be good for another, like, 10 minutes. And then they'd kill your SSH connection. But they wouldn't remove the user. They wouldn't change the password. Anything like that. They would just kill your session. And so I was like, okay, that's annoying. But... <laughs> Not going to stop me. <laughs> I remember, I mean, it was a little more than annoying. I remember sitting there and I would be like, god damn it, I just want to finish this <laughs> command. Like, I'd log in, type half the command, and they'd boot my session. And then I'd just log in again. I'm starting to look for some silly, annoying troll things. Like, okay, how can I change the bash prompt to be like, red team was here and like glitch text or something stupid. Um, installing Go so we can get Terminal Parrot? Yeah. So, yeah, your thing was Terminal Parrot. My thing was Cow Say. Oh, yeah, and it's hilarious once it hits. <laughs> um, there's a lot of good stuff as, as we start to scroll through this because this is when we just meme and troll and be a nuisance. <laughs> um, Check out where it is. So I start to write to different connections, <laughs> trying to talk to people. Um, we got the wall going. <laughs> so I think, so it's not, you can't see it on my machine because I was running all these, but, but at some point around in here I is where I've mentioned it a couple times. Um, I'm just really proud of it. I thought it was hilarious. You, the cow say thing. Yeah, and that's going to happen. You start to wall. Do you show it on my, do I show it on yours? Uh, it's like, Yeah, it comes in. Okay, you don't, okay. you don't write it, you would get to see the script writing, um, but you'll see it happening. And this is hilarious because you're like wall. Hello, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because I had root in their machine, so I was just I was just dumping wall messages to everyone logged in. I just like you. A were couple real, times you're... they responded to us. Yes, I know. they did, and that was when they asked us like, "Please tell me how to fix the fun <laughs> button." <laughs> oh yeah, I think it was dot four or something, and they were like, yeah. "What did you do to dot four? Oh, yeah. And I was like, "What do you mean?" And they're like, "It doesn't boot." And... <laughs> yeah, you'll see when it happens because there's a genuine com- there's a genuine wall conversation. Um, <laughs> One of these exploits that had us do was Paramico, which was cool. We could see different files. Um, and there were two FTP servers, one of which we were able to work in, one of the one of the we were not. Um, you been SSH? I think so. You said you said FTP. I'm sure. sorry, I'm sorry. Let's see what happens. So I'm adding in terminal <laughs> parrot to the bash prompt, and then you see me connect to it. And it errors so often, like, I don't know what Terminal Parrot is. And I think it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> John, you're an idiot. So I try to set up Go, uh, get the Go environment Go variables pads. right, which oh I still never get right and don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> it's really annoying. Yeah. But as soon as, as as I'm seeing more and more, Go is becoming uh, quite a Swiss Army knife for these. <laughs> this is my favorite thing. Uh, this is like SL, but Pusheen. Um, so I try to do that. I try to overwrite Cat with that. Um, and again, I'm getting into danger zone when I try and overwrite LS. But I wanted to get SL, the Steam Locomotive command on here, to uh, switch up their LS command to just be to be a nuisance. And I end up tripping over it myself which is hilarious uh, way too often yeah. because I just so easily, oh, LS, where am I in the world right now? And then <laughs> freaking steam locomotive. But seeing Pusheen happen is hilarious. <laughs> oh, there it is right there. There it is. Oh, yeah. Come on, talk to me. I'm lonely. That was the blue team. Yeah. That, I think, I, that was you. No, no, that that was them. And then I said you should fix dot nine. Because yeah. at this point, we didn't know it was our fault. At this point, we still thought, oh, a reboot would have fixed that. Mm-hmm. And so I was just taunting them, like, hey, you should go fix .9. <laughs> um, but no, it was really broken. <laughs> I want to see when they respond. Because it's, it's, it's so funny. They're like, can you tell me how to do it? <laughs> and then we sa- I say the stupidest thing. Steam will come out. <laughs> Steam will come out. <laughs> literally, literally, like, every five seconds, you'll see me run into my own wall. <laughs> I love this technique, uh, Python simple HTTP server, um, because when you're just trying to pull stuff back and forth to different boxes, you're much better at using netcat to transfer files. Yeah, I do a netcat all the time. Yeah. Just, it's simple and easy, quick and easy. Yeah. 
And that's just uh, like redirecting to. Is anyone here? <laughs> or do they respond? Because I know it's coming up soon. Uh, I create Pusheen. Make him into the cat's binary or the kitten. Something that I did here, I don't know if you saw it, was a SL and, and cats at the same time. So the train <laughs> just goes like, no. <laughs> Where's it at? Please, Please tell, tell me, me how. how. There it is. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you should fix nine please tell I mean, me how. and i i respond oh also you put the uh google chrome um no oh, internet yeah. thing on there yeah you said you said tell you how to what <laughs> <laughs> plays cat with pusheen <laughs> and one of my favorite things deface the web server with the Google Chrome No Internet Dinosaur <laughs> Game. <laughs> it's a great game. Honestly. Oh, it's hilarious. How to, I didn't know you could download a static version of that. How to fix dot nine? Step, Step one: cut a hole in the box. <laughs> Good old Lonely Island reference there. <laughs> <laughs> Paramico exploit. I tried to weaponize and get right a little bit more, but it never seemed to work. I kind of, I kind of felt bad after, later when I was like screwing with them a lot about oh, like. Yeah. Like, how to fix it, and then we found out later that it was actually kind of our fault. And I was like, oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I tried to send a lot of apologies, and that'll be very, very visible. Because they had someone come in the room and ask us. So, so one of the one of the organizers. <laughs> It was either a you were too embarrassed. I <laughs> yeah, I was super embarrassed. I, I went and talked to them. Like I, we, so he somebody walked in at one point, and the yeah. one of the organizers was just like, "Uh, is one of the teams just shutting down the machine every time they start it up?" And me and John looked at each other, and we were like, "No, no. but I think I know what you're talking about." <laughs> we were like, "We didn't mean to, but it might have just completely destroyed their box." Yeah. And so he said, "Okay, we're gonna we're gonna let them know that it's fixable, but like, what's going on?" And and I was like, "If you need me to come fix it, I will, but I need physical access." And he was like, "No, we'll we'll let them know that it's fixable and it's something there, but we'll give them a little time to see if they can fix it, and otherwise we'll come back." So um, they time passes. We, we let them we we let them kind of figure the work for a little while. I think it was probably forty five minutes Might later, an hour or something. Um, and the guy comes back in and he's like, "Can you come here?" And so I looked at John and I was like, "I'll go." So, so I walk into this big room full of these blue team guys all sitting around these tables, and I walk up, and I'm like, hey, Hi, so I'm, I'm your red team. I'm red team. Um, we didn't mean to. I'm sorry, but what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> so they showed me this machine, and for some reason, every time it booted, um, it would just die. And I guess at some point in during the boot process in Ubuntu, um, it runs LS. No idea why it would ever do that during the boot process, but it I does. I wonder how or where that happens. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but every time it booted, it would die before it could even finish booting up because I assume it's running LS. What we ended up trying to do was actually, there was no, uh, console, like direct console on that, on that machine, on those virtual interfaces they had. So we ended up having to detach the hard drive from that VM, attach it to another Linux VM, mount the hard drive in the other Linux VM, remove the bin LS, replace it with the correct bin LS, and then unmount it and attach it back to the original VM. But that still didn't fix it. The machine still didn't boot. I don't know what happened. They ended up getting points back for it, but I was just like, I'm really sorry, but I don't I don't know. <laughs> like we messed up LS, but we didn't do this. Yeah, yeah, that <laughs> shouldn't have happened. Uh so we're trying to run uh Eternal Blue again? I think so. I think I'm just trying to get back some footholds, but Because like you said, this was kind of our burn at time. This is the end of it, the second day. Yeah. 4.30 yeah. the second day. Yeah. Someone sent along all these credentials that apparently came from either the organizers or the people that, that had set up the infrastructure. Um, but I tried to work through some of them with RDP. I tried to work through some of them with PS exec, but none of them seemed to work. So that's that's kind of what, what the, that fiasco is here. But that just straight up didn't happen. So yeah, even, even trying PS exec, which is... Uh, outlandish, outlandish land for me. I don't, I don't know as much as I should in that regard. But Eternal Blue still is kind of the, our magic gun. Um, obviously, I think that should be something that's on your list to immediately patch or immediately put together when you got a, a blue team. Turn going. off SMBV one. Yes. 
There's it's not useful for anything. Registry tweak. <laughs> I don't even know why it's on. Like, why would that even be ever be on? Yeah. This is when we started to... I don't know if it's you or I. I, th I think it was you originally. It was like, yeah, you, let's put let's put everything that they try and cat into Kause. Yeah, so I made a script that <laughs> if you run cat with a file name, it, it was a script that took whatever the contents of that file was and gave it to Kause. So, to be fair, it would cat the file. Oh, yeah, it, it certainly just, would. <laughs> it was just inside of Kause's bubble. Hilarious. Um, so it was great. Eventually, it ended up being Kause piped into lolcats, mm -hmm, actually. Mm -hmm. And that's um, so great. funny. <laughs> There's a point very, very soon where I visibly make the message of the day on their machines as they log in a cow say that says, I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know it's coming up soon. More FTP. That FTP worked basically till the end. Didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just because they somebody either didn't realize completely completely out of mind they were like oh we fixed the password authentication so we're good we're golden but that was a good way in so we're still playing with this fucking uh, yeah squirrel mail man that, that was popped up out of nowhere and, and there was a squirrel mail exploit that should have worked but it wasn't working properly i remember it was a ghost i played with it for a while and then i think you played with it for a little bit and yeah. i just realized your your name for this director is just force <laughs> The force is with you. So, moving through uh, the report again to try and explain what we're doing and how we're doing it. Um, and we did the exact same thing. Having the command execution that we already had, those machines that aren't that had an exploit specified for them, were like, well, we kind of... We pieced it through already, which we were very pleased with. So... Is anyone there? Yeah, starting now to, again, write to people, try and get some conversations going. <laughs> I don't know what... I don't know if that's them or not, because that's their blue team account. Maybe that's us. I don't know. Yeah. That's so funny also when you were playing a red team exercise. Some things might just break or not work, and you don't know, like, did I do that? <laughs> or was that dumb? Did they just kind of... Or sometimes they blame you for something. You're like, nah, yeah, I didn't. I didn't do that. <laughs> I didn't DOS your box. Well, that one was us. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't fork bomb with the LS command. <laughs> So an interesting thing that I did that I think you're seeing here um, is every time, I think it was every uh, it was every few minutes or something like that, uh, I forget what exactly I did, but it would call back out to me. Oh no, it would recreate the files. So I replaced bin slash bin slash cat and slash bin slash uh, ls on one of the machines. And then every, it was a cron job that every like minute or something like that, it would put those files back again because they kept trying to fix them because not having bit cat and not having ls is really annoying um but every time it put those fake files back uh it would also print out to wall like some message with kause it would just be like kause to wall of like some uh uh fortune message yeah yes and, and so you'd see like every two minutes it would oh there's your i'm really sorry <laughs> sorry um every like two minutes you would just see a kause pop up with a fortune <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this comes soon enough. Because we started to install Lolcat. Oh, and I just... <laughs> we were just playing. <laughs> I just sit here and play the online game for a little bit. They hadn't fixed it yet, so... Yeah, yeah, like, well... <laughs> I remember we, we kind of, we, we kind of like, just sat around and got a little little bored. Yeah. Like, why aren't they Why aren't they kicking us out? But, um... <laughs> <laughs> What's your high score? I, I played this for a long time, another exercise that kind of was restrained on internet access. So for like the, the morning briefs and the morning meetings, uh, we, I would sit there for an hour and just play. And I got like <laughs> 30, 32,000, some crazy number. Uh, when I, I was at a training and we also didn't have internet, uh, I did a similar thing, except I figured out how to edit the score. Ooh. I was like, inspect element and found the JavaScript <laughs> to edit the score. That's so awesome. it said that I had like 100,000 points or something like oh that. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. Floppy really bird. Sorry. This is where I start to like do floppy bird. So did we ever actually get it to work on? I our don't machines? know. I don't because it's like not. It's not like we would know. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to see it. So for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Flappy Bird um, is well. Flappy Bird is a game. Obviously, if you've never seen Flappy Bird, Google it. Um, but get there out is from a under your rock. <laughs> there is a. I guess you call it a port of that 
to literally x86 assembly um, that you can write to the bootloader of a disk and then reboot the machine, and that machine is completely screwed. Um, but the nice part about that is that, goodness, is that you have uh, a Flappy Bird game to play. So it will reboot, it destroys your OS, but you have a Flappy Bird game to play in your bootloader. And you hit spacebar, you can actually play the game. It's really funny. Um, somebody did it to us at uh, Pros vs. Joe's. Yes. In was it Delaware? Delaware. Delaware, Delaware was yeah. the game you played. Yeah. <laughs> Turtle Parrot. <laughs> <laughs> I just said that in, in Bash RC and they're, they're hosts. Like, you can't, you can't break out of that. It's so funny. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Kausi looks so sad when he says I'm sorry. <laughs> so I hope that that was kind of fun. Uh, I hope that was a, a, a quality training environment for the blue know. team because I think, I don't know, I hope there was enough learning that, that we were able to provide so, and the same morale. I think a really cool thing was uh, the learning during it, cool, yeah, but then also afterwards they had the kind of dinner thing. Yeah. We actually had to sit down with the yes. blue team that we were red teaming for and kind of they asked us questions. We asked them questions like, hey, what did you do here to do this? And they asked us, oh, we saw this, we couldn't get you out here, and they would ask us questions. That was a really good back and forth, I think, at the very end of the yeah. day. Yeah. Um, it was really quality time for learning. All your basic this is where this is where I think you start to do it is because you you had pulled like a list or yeah you, so I had, I had a list of things it wasn't just the fortune command I had pulled a list of different funny sayings that would just pop up yeah um, what I was trying to do was to get uh, cow say with that fortune through lol cats to every terminal but interestingly wall removes all of your uh, like escape, escape sequences yeah. yeah. So I had to find a different way to do it, and I think you might be doing it as well. Um, so what we ended up doing, what you'll see us kind of figuring out here, uh, is instead of calling wall, since we had root access, we just opened dev pts slash every single pts that's open. Um, <laughs> uh, and just sent it directly to their terminals, uh, just bypassing wall. Um, so it actually worked really well. It was really funny. We just sent all these messages directly to them. And at this point, so many things have been burned. I'm not even sure how much they saw of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. we just sent it to all the terminals. Uh, it was pretty funny. It's hard to imagine what they would be, what they would be thinking. Like, cause I know, especially when I play on the blue team side, you just like put your head in your hands, man. Like, yeah. I just feel like I put, put my head through fan blades. Especially when everything starts snowballing. Oh, like, okay, gosh. we lost this machine, we lost this machine, I log into this one, I can't call LS Cat or anything. Like, I, <laughs> <laughs> like, I log into this one, I get a terminal parrot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm really sorry. What do we have left? <laughs> this is where it is. We're like, are you guys doing all right? How, how... <laughs> how are you guys doing? This is where you were testing because you can see your format string in there. Yeah, yeah, and your quotes are start rolling through. <laughs> Everything in the universe is either a potato or not a potato. <laughs> <laughs> and we started to Google like, how do we get Wall to keep our escape sequences? Oh, so, I, I, I jumped the gun a little bit earlier. No, I mean you're, you're totally fine. This is good, good explaining because uh, the eventual solution that we find is writing it to uh, terminal. Yeah, directly to the PTS. Yeah. It was just two toothpicks labeled. <laughs> Dilithium crystals. Hello? I can't wait to see these just to pop up in rainbow on your terminal with no way for you to stop it. I yeah. can't wait. I don't know how, how quick there it is. is, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're testing your patience. Reading terms and conditions. <laughs> yeah. That's so good. I found those by Googling like reticulating splines <laughs> the, phrases the, or the something Sims like that. Because I wanted all those like Sims type messages. Yeah. <laughs> Quality. And it just goes. <laughs> It's just everywhere. Uh, I, I like really the, hope they saw it. Yeah, because the colors that Lolcat gives are different. Yeah, because I was but, calling Lolcat every time. Okay. So it was random. But you're getting the same message. Yeah. Which is, I think is funny. <laughs> so I would I would generate a phrase and then iterate through all the PTSs and pipe the phrase to Kause to Lolcat. So Lolcat's would pick a random color, even if it was the same phrase and pipe it yeah. to all the different terminals. This was a technique that I thought and f I thought of and found really, really fun. I would cat dev you <laughs> random <laughs> into their terminal. So their 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 terminal just gets flooded. obliterated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if I see someone log in, I just like span garbage at them. <laughs> 
I was very, very pleased with that. And that is all the footage that I have for Cyberforce. But it was super fun. It was cool. C-Matrix, the only way to end a video. We're lead hackers and stuff, dude. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it was long, but was sweet. Long. Thanks. I hope you had fun. Thanks for watching, Internet. <laughs>